Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville, Maryland. We are glad you're here with us today. First, a congratulations to Ron and Connie Chesnick on the celebration of their 55th wedding anniversary. So, congratulations. Today also we will collect a special offering in support of the Synod Office's uh, Key Bridge relief efforts. So there are envelopes in your pews and there are some over on the stand where the bulletins are to put your special offering in the plate and then that will all be directed to relief efforts that the Synod is doing and according to the Synod page, 100% of those monies will go to that effort. So please give generously. The Strawberry Festival is fast approaching and Marcia is looking for those who are willing to help. So see Marcia. There's a sign up too. So see Marcia, better than the sign up. <laughs> um, I have a note here from Worship and Arts and Choir. See if I can find the right thing. I will read this out. It says, the choir in conjunction with uh, pastor and worship and arts requests that henceforth no applause should be made following any anthem or solo, as these are not performances. They are gifts to God. Silence is our appreciation to God for these gifts so provided. So, please. And I would also like to thank especially Roxanne, um, everyone who helped out and made last night's community meal a success. I think we had 29 or so uh, folks join us for sausage and peppers at uh, Woodsboro. So it was a great fellowship. And I think the next one is June. June. So keep your eye out for that. And now let's quiet our hearts for worship.
Please stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy, have mercy on, us. on us. We confess, we confess that, that we have turned from, from you and given, and given ourselves into, into the power of sin. sin. We, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. repent. In your, in your compassion, compassion, forgive us, us our sins, known and unknown, and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold, and uphold us by your spirit, spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. And God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter comes from the fourth chapter of Acts verses 5 through 12. Introduction. Peter and John had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authorities. The first reading. The next 
day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas and the high priest Cephas, John and Alexander, all and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 23, read responsibly by the half verse, the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lay down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading for today comes from the third <laughs> chapter of 1 John, verses 16 to 24. Introduction. Jesus' death on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. This is the very love we share with others, not just through our words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we will fulfill God's commandments. The second reading. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in tr truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commands us. All who obeys his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the second reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace be unto you, peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What does being a sheep of the fold or being a member of a congregation mean to you? Does it mean that we are all alike? We have the same hobbies, enjoy the same food, listen to the same music, or read the same books? Look around this holy space for a second and think if what you see here is representative of our community, our county, or our nation. We often see ourselves as this church or that church, but the reality is that we are sheep of one fold, the fold belonging to the Good Shepherd and ultimately to the congregation of God. In verse 16 of our gospel reading, Jesus tells those gathered, he has other sheep that do not belong to this fold, that he will bring them also. They will listen to his voice. There will be one flock. There will be one shepherd. This is how we live out the commandment to love one another. We respect that others might not be of our fold, but they are members of our one flock. And being part of that one flock that belongs to the Good Shepherd means loving neighbors in all of their diversity and thus moving them closer to attaining that same resurrection to eternal life. We have many Christian siblings in our community who are not experiencing that power of our one flock as they have opted to disconnect for, from their various church congregations they fail to come together to be nourished and protected by our Good Shepherd, feeling they can do it alone without a faith community to provide love and support. Some of our siblings have good reason to distance themselves from congregations, as they may have been the recipient of pain and suffering on, a, on the part of a particular fold of the flock, Yet we are challenged to repair those relationships and continually welcome them back to the fold, much like Jesus does with the lost sheep. We, as emissaries of the Good Shepherd, are called to share the good news of our resurrected Christ and invite all members of God's flock to be with us. When was the last time you reached out and really talked to someone who used to be an active member here. Do you speak about church, the scriptures, the fellowship shared, being in person, or even how your relationship with Jesus guides you along the path to the cross and beyond? If so, that's tremendous and a wonderful means by which we as disciples include these sheep into our fold and it is good to know that we are sharing our faith with the greater flock. If not, why not? I would think that at one time or another you've had these conversations and were comfortable in not being afraid to broach the subject of Christ. Perhaps in some of these relationships the issue is known and it is just avoided which is not a healthy response because it never gets reconciled. In some cases, it's just easier to stay away and 
not confront a particular demon or hurt or issue, which leads to a festering distrust of the fold and of the greater flock. In most cases, there is someone who knows what is happening, why it is happening, and in the spirit of friendship and faithfulness, the issues are never brought up, which can be unfair to those coming behind trying to build up a particular fold. Secrets are kept, and everyone goes on as if nothing has happened, leading to nothing happening to restore a right relationship. I would like for you to think of yourself as a shepherd, one who has the responsibility to protect the flock, and in some cases we, are, we may believe we are doing that by our inaction with certain sheep of our fold. We may think we have opened our hearts to particular situations because we are not sharing known issues with the other shepherds. Yet as we, in our confession, God, who knows all of our desires and from whom no secrets are hid, we ask forgiveness of things we have done or things we have failed to do. And in failing to be the shepherd, welcoming someone back into the fold, we do disservice to those as they may feel they are not cared for and will not be welcomed back into the greater flock. There are also those who feel they are in the greater flock and do not need to be a part of the fold, but the fold is where fellowship, trust, love, and hope can be nurtured together. The fold is where we experience the love of God in Christ Jesus, allowing us to avoid the wolves who would take us away from others. Jesus, the shepherd, invites and encourages those, excuse me, outside to enter the fold, ones he must bring in that we may be one. Jesus wants them with him so that this world will look different when all come to believe his precious words and experience a new life in him. Jesus has this power and glory of love for all people from the Father and invites us to just imagine this new world as Easter people following the Good Shepherd. What does it take for us to be a shepherd of the flock instead of just a hired hand? Being a hired hand means just sitting back, waking, waiting for things to happen or to be told what to do, to be passive in our service to God, although sometimes a nudge in the right direction can be helpful. Being a shepherd means stepping out of our comfort zone and being a part of the solution instead of a hindrance. And the shepherd is one who is consistently seeking out ways to serve Christ in our world and does so without seeking any recognition, special compensation, or acknowledgement for what has been accomplished. The shepherd is one who, without reservation or bias, invites those outside of the fold to be a part of the flock. The shepherd is one who loves our neighbor, regardless of whether there is always agreement or whatever the issue. The shepherd is one who realizes we are not all alike and embraces the differences we have, because that is what Christ did, even up to the cross and beyond. Sins forgiven, wrongs forgiving. We go forth alert and living in your spirit, strong and free, partners in your new creation, seeking peace in every nation. We may be faithful followers be. The words found in the last verse of today's sending him remind us that as shepherds of the flock, we praise the Lord, we rise up rejoicing and strive to bring the scattered flock home. If each and every one of us reached out to just one of our scattered fold, and even if just one lost sheep returned, we would have done what the Good Shepherd has called us to do. And I recall during this past Christmas season, we had one or two of our comfort bags left over. It had come to my attention that 
one of our neighbors on Pennsylvania Avenue was having a difficult time. And I suggested to one of our shepherds it might be worthwhile to drop one of these gifts off to this family. There was trepidation at first, but the mission was accepted. While it may not have translated to necessarily having someone in our pews, our outreach made a profound impact on this family and I'm sure heightened and brightened their Christmas season. It doesn't take much to be a shepherd of the fold. The only thing necessary is willingness to be a part of something greater than ourselves to put others ahead of our own selves, and to believe firmly we are all sheep who are in Christ's flock. Have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. The Father will keep you in his love forever. The Father will uplift and restore you because he stays close beside you, and in all things the Father collaborates with you. God will show you the way, and the way is through Christ and the resurrection. We need not worry if we are different from each other, as that is what makes us special in God's eyes. Embracing change and difference are the ways we move forward to opening the gates of our hearts to seek out those who may be lost and searching for that safe fold. Opening our hearts, our minds, and sharing our faith allows those different from us to feel free from harm and a sense of protection within this fold. Be a sheep of the fold. Be a shepherd of the flock. Be Christ in the world. In this, we will all be one flock with one good shepherd. Amen. faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God. Preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, Protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Protect those who are sick or struggling, especially Joseph, Mark, Gary, Jim, Camden, Florence, Heather, Lexi, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen to your voice. Call us away from things that distract from us following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the mar margins. God of grace. Hear our yeah. prayer. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith and those who have laid down their lives in service to others, especially police officer Michael Jensen and Lieutenant Michael Husick. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forward forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creation, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome at Christ's table. Come as you are. The feast is prepared. The table is set. Come and eat.
Please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you've united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Invite someone into the fold and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.